guys bob gary here ancient reproductions i wanted to uh just quickly talk about a subject and that is commercial breeding or commercial breeders um i attempt to interject information from a commercial breeding level oftentimes times to the uh, facebook groups and to general hobbyists um and i've done this for years decades going back to when i helped organize a, a panel of the all florida herb conference right so you know, for example, I thought it would be really cool to have Frank Redis in, right? Because he was doing work with monitors and, uh, you know, species that nobody else was and getting stuff to reproduce. And he was doing some really cool stuff, much less as, you know, he's a heavily qualified guy that's, you know, thought of, as, I think, probably as a thought leader and has, you know, has done a tremendous amount of work in captivity, right? I thought he was like, man, that guy's the coolest guy to bring over. Um, had Bill Brandt, had numerous other people, might have had Gene Bissett, and, and I'm sure more folks. And so we had folks I know in the audience that had the same species, but in small numbers, right? And so I figured, my gosh, wouldn't it be cool to be able to talk to somebody that doesn't have like two of something, but might have 50 or 100 and be trying different techniques and methods and see how successful they are or see what they might share. Um, you know, because gosh, their sample size being so much larger, you know, they can try more things, gather more information, and frankly, learn at a faster rate than any hobbyist or somebody with a lot less numbers. So if you guys get a chance to interact with somebody that uh, has experience in commercial production, I think you need to put your hat on and your thinking cap on and come up with some fantastic questions that tap into the numbers experience that this person has seen. I can just tell you that there are things going on in commercial collections that have never been posted on Facebook or the web at all. There's very dynamic uh, management uh, things being tried, breeding things being tried. I can't elaborate on any of that, um, but it's fascinating. And those are in collections where there's the most on the line, it's the most work, it's the most stress, it's the most pressure. So. Uh, on the snakes and the people, really. And, uh, and so that's why I look to those folks to be interesting resources of information and I think are fantastic sources for being uh, for a hobbyist because all of the folks that are, have big operations now grew, th you know, oftentimes grew through hobbyists, through passionate, you know, small breeder, and then grew from there for a number of different reasons and ways. So don't tune out when you hear commercial production. Even if you have a moral disagreement, if you keep reptiles uh, and you keep a species that, you know, you have a contact or you see somebody in a Facebook group or somebody that's like that, you know, ask a fantastic question. It might just blow you away. Um, those folks are walking around with information that is pretty revolutionary to the hobbyist level. And I can guarantee you of that. And that's one of the values I want to bring to you guys is that I have commercial level experience and have been a commercial producer. Um, so I hope to pollinate, you know, this channel with that type of information, or at least the concept as I normally do here, just to encourage you guys. But again, when I see Facebook, it's amazing. People just shut down when I mention commercial breeder, and that's when you should light up. That's just my opinion. I just want to help you guys, you know, get every, you know, create what, what I, in life I have uh, been a connector oftentimes. Often I'm a fundraiser, I'm a connector. I keep a lot in my mind. Uh, I like to work with talented people. And um, if I can connect somebody to something I do, and uh, that's how I feel about this. It's like you guys, I think, can benefit so much from this information or perspective that even if you get just a single nugget that makes you think differently, it's a fantastic thing, you know? I used to attend conferences and if I, I would spend three days in the hopes of getting a question or two answered. And then I thought if I could get a quality question or two answered, that it was worth my entire weekend, all the expenses and all the time, because that's how much I valued people's opinions back then. Um, you know, the people that are, you know, a generation older than me that, that are really the, the, the guys that started laying it down in the 70s and the 80s. So anyway, uh, again, as always, guys, much love. Think creatively, have confidence, don't care what other people think. Uh, most are boring and uncreative. 
and uh, do wild stuff and you'll probably end up having a fantastic experience. And at the very least, you'll learn a ton. So be good.